Hello, Zog here. Welcome to the sixth episode of Earthlings 101. Today we will talk about beauty. Beauty is a typical earthling concept, a subjective quality of objects, creatures, or even geometrical forms or ideas. When you ask earthlings what beauty is, they will babble about beauty being a light in the heart, the splendor of truth, a manifestation of secret natural laws, the sensible image of the infinite, truth's smile, eternity gazing at itself in a mirror, or even a gift from an imaginary bio-administrator. In other words, they have no idea. Which is strange as earthlings are more attracted by beauty than centauri lawyers are attracted by a mass divorce. Earthlings are attracted to all kinds of things. Sometimes the reasons are obvious, because the things are useful for feeding, reproducing and not dying. But sometimes, earthlings are attracted to things that have apparently no immediate use, like flowers, music, trees or gems. This seemingly useless appeal is called beauty. An example for a beautiful object is this painting. For an alien, it's just a picture of a female earthling in front of a landscape. For earthlings, it's one of the most beautiful objects in the world. But what makes things like this painting so particular? The most obvious point of beauty is that earthlings enjoy it, and if you have learned anything during this course, it's probably that whenever earthlings enjoy something, you can be pretty sure that the genetic imperative is behind it. Beauty is probably no exception. So, instead of philosophizing about eternity and truth, let's look at some examples. Things earthlings usually consider beautiful include flowers, fertile landscapes, attractive but sexually unavailable females, bird songs, precious metals and gems, impressive buildings, and even interesting shapes or ideas. Why are earthlings attracted to those things? Let's pick an example, landscapes. Experiments have shown that earthlings consider a landscape beautiful if it is fertile, has bodies of fresh hydric acid and some trees that can be used as firewood. Interestingly, this is exactly the kind of landscape a bio-administrator would chose for a settlement on an alien planet. Usually, a bio-administrator attracts specimen to a region using a positive psychical response field emitter, commonly known as happy box. Whoever approaches the emission range of the happy box becomes instantly happy. So, specimens settle in these regions and start cultivating them happily, even if their efforts will only bear fruits many seasons later. In other words, a happy box is a bait, a substitute pleasure. A promise of future happiness. My guess is that beauty is exactly the same as a happy box, only without the happy box. Evolution favors earthlings who settle in landscapes where they can harvest food in the summer and firewood in the winter. But earthlings usually seek immediate pleasure rather than thinking months ahead. So, evolution found the trick of rewarding the discovery of fertile landscapes immediately with a substitute pleasure, some kind of virtual happy field, in order to motivate them to settle there. That's what earthlings call beauty. Of course, Beauty is not an actual happy field. It's a feeling generated by the beast which floods the ego with pleasure when seeing a fertile landscape, or when receiving indicator signals for fertile landscapes such as flowers or bird songs. Now, not all beautiful things are about fertile landscapes. For many earthlings, beauty means above all beautiful females. A female is considered beautiful if she is sexually attractive but not immediately sexually available. As I explained in episode 3. Female earthlings are rather picky about their sexual partners due to their limited childbearing capacity, so males have to make an effort to get chosen. Now, when the female is very attractive, this courtship can last a while and involve many candidates. Unfortunately, earthlings prefer immediate pleasure to uncertain future delight. So, evolution needed a trick to motivate them not to give up too early. The trick was basically the same as for landscapes beauty, a virtual happy field around attractive but unavailable females. So, the thing that beautiful females and beautiful landscapes have in common is simply the fact that they have both been tagged as beautiful by evolution, as an indicator of fertility and the promise of future happiness. Males can also be beautiful, even more in a society that has started questioning its own gender roles, when males can become wooed, they need beauty to keep the wooers interested. But what about precious metals, gems and huge buildings? Well, they are indications of another thing that may lead to future happiness, wealth. When an earthling, or an earthling community, 
is wealthy, they tend to display their wealth with rare metals, precious stones, expensive cloth and huge buildings. This is called, pomp. Now, living in a wealthy city or around a wealthy person usually doesn't provide immediate pleasure, but it may pay on the long run. This holds for traders, mercenaries, workers, servants, prostitutes, artisans, quacks, assassins, tax investigators and many other kinds of people. So, human nature uses again the happy field trick to attract people to wealth. This is why pomp is considered beautiful. Earthlings often attach little trinkets made of precious metals and gems to their body to increase their attractivity. This works because being wealthy is sexy, but also because the pomp happy field around these trinkets add to the beauty happy field around the person. Earthlings call these trinkets jewelry. However, earthling beauty includes more than landscapes, females and pomp. Beauty can also apply to shapes, patterns or even ideas. This abstract beauty is determined by criteria like proportion, symmetry, smooth forms, simplicity, contrast and self-similarity. But why should nature tag those things as beautiful? Some criteria like symmetry and smooth forms may be inherited from sexual attractivity. Also, smooth rocks may indicate the presence of hydric acid during rainy seasons. But I doubt that this is enough to explain the sense of abstract beauty. It may have to do with solving abstract problems. Even complicated problems have often surprisingly simple and elegant solutions. Bio-administrators often use this when they want to influence the thought process of some native genius creature. They scan the brain of the genius, observe the thought process, and then tag simple and elegant ideas with tiny happy fields, because simple and elegant ideas may lead to a simple and elegant solution. Abstract beauty works the same way. Consider a prehistoric earthling who is about to invent the wheel. That's what he got so far, an irregular, pentagonal wheel which works but makes five hops at every turn. Logic may lead the earthling to think that by cutting off some corners, he can reduce the number of hops per turn. But that's the wrong approach. Now, the sense of beauty may lead him into the opposite direction, to a more elegant shape, a circle. And as it turns out, that's actually a pretty good shape for a wheel. So, when dealing with problems, beauty may be a hint to a solution. That's maybe why earthlings say that beauty is the splendor of truth. Scientific Advice when you experiment on earthlings, you might want to examine the way their brains process patterns. You will notice that some patterns are easier to process than others. Now, there is a theory that the ease to process patterns is actually connected to beauty. Earthlings call this the processing fluency theory of aesthetic pleasure. Remember this painting? Now we understand why earthlings consider it so beautiful, it shows a wealthy, attractive, but not salacious woman in front of a rather fertile landscape, surrounded by mountains which provide fresh hydric acid. Besides, the painting's composition follows simple geometric rules and is almost symmetric. And although the painter goes easy on the pomp, the painting itself is worth roughly the equivalent of 7 million republic credits, which certainly adds to the appeal. Of course, in this case, there is no real landscape, no real woman, it's all paint on sheets of cellulose, an elaborate deception of the senses. That's what earthlings call art. We will come back to this phenomenon in a moment. During the last episodes, we have seen that the beast manipulates the ego with different kinds of pleasures, or, if you want, with different kinds of happy fields, the fun field around games and stories, the sexy field around attractive earthlings, the yummy field around food, the love field around family, the cute field around cubs, the funny field which I will explain in another episode, and the beauty field around things like flowers, jewels and hyperbolic proboloids. As beauty is kind of an all-purpose happy field, nature uses it often to amplify sexy fields, cute fields and love fields. So, earthlings may find these things beautiful. Now, earthlings have learned to imitate the stimuli that generate all these happy fields, some drugs imitate fun, porn imitates sexual stimuli, diet drinks imitate sweetness, stuffed animals and dolls imitate loved beings, lol cats imitate small animals, jokes imitate funny situations, and art imitates the stimuli of beauty. The phenomenon of art is similar to what happens to some administrative planets when the bio-administrator is gone. Sometimes, the natives find a remaining happy box, retro-engineer it and build their own happy boxes. These boxes are then sold, put onto public places and into showrooms, where they flood the environment with totally pointless happy waves. Rich natives wear tiny happy boxes around their neck to be more appealing, or exhibit the boxes in their house to show their wealth. Individuals who conceive new happy wave patterns become rich and famous, companies use happy boxes for advertising and the production of boxes and happy wave patterns becomes a whole new industry. Exactly the same happens on Earth, only without the happy boxes. Earthlings called artists have learned to imitate the stimuli of beauty in paintings, sculptures, and so on. These objects are called artworks. 
Art is related to natural beauty like diet drinks are related to actual sugar, or porn to actual sex, they imitate the stimuli of pleasure, but out of context and deprived of their utility. Not surprisingly, earthling art often focuses on beautiful people, and on the abundance of nature, landscapes, flowers, fruits, and all kinds of living creatures. Except for, the microbes. <laughs> Tips for tourists. If you are interested in art, visit an art museum. However, you should avoid modern art, as it often challenges or distorts the concept of beauty. Better start with classical art, it's much easier to understand. Art is not limited to visual stimuli. One of the most important indicators of fertile regions are bird songs, which are in consequence considered beautiful. Now, earthlings have developed something that sounds like an attempt to imitate bird songs, music. The most common methods to make music are singing, blowing into metal tubes, and using vibrating strings attached to hollow boxes. The development of music has probably also been influenced by prehistoric rituals, sexual selection, and by imitation of bird songs for hunting. Earthlings love beauty so much that they even conceive everyday objects to be all artsy and beautiful, like clothing, chairs or buildings. Earlings call this design. Like art, design follows trends. What is beautiful today may become ugly in some decades. A particularly interesting case of design are individual vehicles called cars. Regardless of trends, cars have always a stylized face on the front. Why is this so? I've no idea. Maybe earthlings are afraid of fast-moving faceless objects, like landslides, forest fires, killer waves, or swarms of furious insects. So they put faces onto their cars to make them less frightening. Strategic advice. If you want to gain the earthlings trust before taking over the planet, it won't be easy if they think your ships are ugly. So you might want to abduct some earthling designers and have them design a beautiful landing shuttle. Elegant forms, white paint and a touch of blue or green are great for convincing earthlings that you come in peace. However, you should go easy on the pomp because a, earthlings associate exaggerated pomp with tyrants and crime lords, and b, the natives may be tempted to steal your spaceship. Art may seem like an absurdity, a self-deception, a global joke. But you can also see it from another angle, as an attempt of mankind to grow beyond the necessity of biology. Earthlings live under the tyranny of the genetic imperative, much more than they generally realize, but maybe art, and beauty in general, are a way of escaping from the grip of this tyrant, of tricking their own nature into giving them happiness without biological necessity. On the other hand, you could say the same about lolcats, diet drinks or porn. So. Anyway, this was episode 6 of Earthlings 101. On a personal note, I will be on vacation next month, I plan to visit the orbital castles of Eerie Old. So. The next episode will probably not come before the Galactic Nerdfighter Day, or, in Earthling terms, beginning of September. In the next episode, we will learn about the social mechanisms behind words like hello, please, thank you and sorry. We also learn why international karma trade is big business. As always, thanks for watching. And don't forget to be alien.